What's good? How you doing? Ladies um, and gentlemen. I have Snap here with me. This is Poe. If y'all can see me, yes, I am darkness. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Black I'm black. I've been writing. It's cool. Um, it <laughs> is 12.28 in the morning. Yeah. And we are bringing you another segment. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can see me, just whatever. Just comment. Let me know the better line of nigga. Something. Whatever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, topic we're reading you today, we're just going to go straight to the point. Um, if you see the first two videos, of course, um, you know exactly where our mind is at or is. And at the same time, where we're going to go ahead and take everything specifically upward. So um, today's topic is how to discern or use a discernment to know how to find love in other people or know that the person that you're speaking with or encounter with at that certain time has love in their heart and in their soul as well. Indeed. So, um, let me go ahead and just prepare myself. Okay. Hopefully y'all can see me a little bit like that. I'm just gonna sit back here. You know, because we got the special light effects over here to the right that you can't see. We're trying. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, do to do, baby. I'm going to make it do to do, baby. <laughs> so, um, I'm just going to go ahead and try and give, well, not try, I'm going to go ahead and give my point on actually the situation on how to specifically discern yourself <laughs> and knowing yourself um, how to go ahead and do finding love in other people. Now, it's very simple and it's very easy. But at the same time, it does take time and patience. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, uh, you have to know yourself and know exactly who you are dealing with when you wake up in the morning and you look yourself in the mirror mm-hmm. and see exactly who you're dealing with before you know exactly who you're dealing with on the outside. Have a grasp of your identity. And how mm-hmm. to go ahead and specifically know how to know who you're dealing with not just from the outside of yourself, but others as well that encounter your world. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and start. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, it's very simple. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start from the basics uh, or the last part where you based off that as far as knowing yourself. So let's go from there. You know yourself, you know exactly who you are. Um, you know where your spirit and your soul is specifically is. And you happen, uh, you know, I like to use examples. So I'm going to use a perfect example, different from the work environment. I'm going to use a church environment. You happen to just step back in the church and you happen to just start to get back, get your feet back wet. And you're saying, you know, what, I'm going to give this church a try. You're looking for churches. You're trying to find that home, that temple, that foundation, and just go from there. So... You go there, all you you just feel a whole bunch of crazy vibes. You don't know exactly what you're specifically feeling. Um, what you're feeling right now is everyone's energy, everyone's soul mm-hmm. at one time. Now you have to separate yourself to know that what you're feeling specifically is you. And then know exactly how to feel everyone else individually and all together at the same time. Now... Again, it does take time and patience for everything, for you to do all of these things specifically. And the way how you do it, to me, step-by-step rule, is, of course, prayer. Yes, prayer helps every and anything. Any video that you see me in, I will I will, and always say prayer yeah. is one of the main things that you have to specifically do mm-hmm. before you get into anything about discernment Absolutely. or anything that involves. Prayer and meditation period, within the whatever body. Whatever case may be. So, mm-hmm. um, moving forward. Now, you've already did the prayer. You're already showing, putting your footstep forward. Wow. You're putting your foot forward, knowing and saying exactly what you're doing. You're for sure. There's no double-mindedness about you. You have complete, full confidence in what you're doing and what you're saying, specifically. That alone. Just on what you're doing, what you're saying, and everything else just flows along because you are letting God take the wheel. You are letting Him guide you. You are letting Him take yes. the control. 
That was are, not a quote from Kevin and, Hart's ladies and gentlemen. Um, now, what you're doing is specifically letting him take the wheel and guide you in your course of days, in your course of life. And with that being said, you encounter someone. So, of course, somebody's going to step to you and say, hey, you're new. They are going to know you're new, but of course, they're going to ask and say, hey, you're new. Um, you're, you're visiting our church, right? Yeah, you say yes. They ask you where you're from. They want to get to know you. Please do not let this be a bother to you because not all churches does this. I know my church does it. They will step, somebody, an elder will step to you, or a pastor, or one of our ministers will step to you and say, hey, such and such, how you doing? My name is such and such. How your, uh, how's your day going so far? And they will smoothly get into the specifics of knowing who you are, not to be in your business. They're not going to ask you specifically about your business. They're going to ask you specifically on how you are so they could get to know who you is so you could come back the following Sunday or later on through the week to continue coming and growing with us specifically before they ask you to join our church and join our home. Now, you're speaking with this person and you're starting to feel a funny vibe. You're starting to feel a specific vibe that you do not like. Now, it could be a lot of things. Some people, some ministers, some members, some people in the church are hypocrites. Some people do have evil spirits on them. Some people do have some type of vibe that you are not specifically drawn to or not supposed to be drawn to. And that right there is your discernment. Now you're trying to figure out exactly what they want with you. Now you're trying to figure out what exactly, why they're asking all these specific questions. And once you're able to specifically dissect every single verbiage that they're saying to you and every single sentence and word that they're saying to you specifically from there, yes, I say, I say specifically a lot because this is straight on to the point, straight on to the, you have to actually target every single thing and every single word that's being <clears throat> taught or said to you so you can know exactly how to respond correctly um but that was like a little sidebar whatever anyway um now when you're discerning and you're trying to feel this person out you're feeling this person vibe of course your your eyebrows are raised up your hairs are pointed up to straight to the area like okay you know what you're getting that gut that somewhere in here and that gut feeling you're feeling as if that person yeah, this person is not supposed to talk to me at all. This person is not supposed to be in my life whatsoever. When you feel that specific vibe, don't specifically go directly into it, but dive in, but at the same time, just take a swim. Just take a natural swim mm. into it, just to see how exactly they are responding back to you with everything you're saying and how they're responding back to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So, as you're doing that, as the responses are going back and forth, of course, by the third question, you should have your mind made up to the point where do you want to continue this conversation or for your entertainment, personal entertainment, if you're a sarcastic person, or if you just want to cut this off and get straight to the point and know exactly what this church is all about. Now, you've kindly dismissed the person. You let them know, hey, I'm just here to listen to the word and go home. Simple. That this is the word to go home. The second you open yourself up a little bit to, yeah, you know, <laughs> I've been going from church to church, da, 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 da. the second you do that, they're going to target you. Yep. And the second they target you, they're going to go in with more questions that, yep. you're just, that your soul, that your repaired soul is not specifically ready for as a thing. Now you're questioning so yourself. So now you have to sit back and just observe. Now you have to sit there and observe and try to answer these questions that's being thrown at you correctly and precisely. And now you're feeling as if, you know what, I want to tell this person to get out of my face, but I don't know how to tell this person to get out of my face because I don't want to say what I have to say or say the wrong things in this house of God, period. <laughs> I don't want to say, hey man, get the fuck out of my face in the church. That's just, yeah, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody, any atheist says. They, I know for sure, and I can look them in the eyes. They will not walk into a church and say, get the fuck out of my face, blatantly like that. They will not do that. For some reason, somehow, they know deep inside they have respect for God. They have a knowing of God. So they're going to keep denying it, and they're not going to do that at all whatsoever. But 
you're discerning and you get them off of your back. Now, someone else comes along, for example, someone sitting beside you. You ask them, hey, do you mind passing me a fan or passing me a Bible, passing you something? And they do so kindly. Put a smile on their face. You see that they're so joyful. They're so filled with happiness. But at the same time, when you're observing this person, you're like, well, this person ain't nowhere near me. I know this person is really in that ultimate struggle because I could just see it. Not because of the specific clothes that they're wearing, but just you could see it. But at the same time, you see that joy and happiness. So then you start to ask, you get curious and you ask them a question. How is the church? How How is your church? Or this is, if, is this your church? Okay, great. They say yes. Okay, how do you guys operate? How do you guys specifically go on on a daily service? How do you guys do this, do that, da, 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 da? You go on and on and on. Then you start to realize these questions that you're asking is your discernment of love because you found that specific love in that person that was sitting beside you. Love is going to specifically guide you and lead you into the right direction all the time. Mm -hmm. Love is nothing wrong. Love is always great. It's always beautiful. It's always blossomful. It's always ever growing because it is God, specifically. I'll keep saying specifically. Anyway, um, God is specifically, God is love. So you found that specific, that God trait in someone else that you have. So now you latch on to this person. And the more they're teaching you, the more you're building with the specific, the more you're building with this person, the more you're noticing that your discernment of love is specific, is growing, it's building somewhere. And now your mindset, your heart is, okay, I found this love. I found God's love in this one person, in this ideal person that God was always looking for when he was looking for Adam, when he was looking at Noah, when he was looking at Jesus. Mm-hmm. So you found this you, you found this ideal trait that you love so much about this person. This person is so it's, it's so loving, it's not overbearing, it's not too low, but it's at the right pace, it's at the right time, it's at the right moment. It's it just gels so well with you. And it could be a man or woman, it doesn't matter. It could be a child. It really doesn't matter. And yes, it can be a child. It's happened. So, you found this love, and now your discernment is growing. And now that you found this one person, everywhere you go, you know exactly how to find discernment of love. You know exactly how to know how to, how to find what the right verbiage will be that comes out of your mouth. Because now all you're speaking as you're growing your discernment of love is love. All you speak is positivity. All you speak is greatness. All you speak is just the exuberance of love. You may not notice it. You may not see it. You may not even, you may, you you are going to feel it, but you may not notice it at that specific time, Mm -hmm. but you're going to notice it when you sit back by yourself and you're watching a specific TV show, you're listening to your music and something triggers it. Your mind starts going and then boom, you realize, oh, I have been growing lately. I haven't been the same since yesterday. And I haven't been the same for the past two weeks ever since I met this one trait of God in this one person. So what are you going to do now now that you realize? Continue to grow. Why would you stop? Why would you get hesitant? Why would you be scared? Now that your confidence in your discernment is stronger than ever, now you're growing your love. Now you're seeing love in everyone else. Now you know who to speak to directly. You know who not to speak to directly. And once you grow your discernment of love to a certain strength, now you're going to be talking to those people that you wasn't supposed to talk to. Now now you're going to see yourself being led to talk to those people that you wasn't supposed to talk to because you have to spread that love that you received two weeks ago and put it in that person and open that up and let them speak to you. Bingo. And now their love is open. And now they're going to go ahead and do the same thing and just start a chain of reaction of love, chain of reaction of positivity, chain of reaction of just open mindedness and keeping your discernment on point Bingo. of how to always love and not to hate and not to 
mislead and not to be double-minded and not to have confidence and not to feel stronger within yourself. I mean, why would you not feel stronger within yourself? That makes no sense to me whatsoever. So with that being said, that's my little piece on it. I'm pretty sure I had more, but it is now 12.43 a.m. in the morning. <sighs> so yes, I am drained, but Snap will take it from here and end it off. Snap on the mic. Take that how you want to take it. <laughs> so, when it comes to the sermon of love and seeing that in others, I got my own spin. Okay, it's just the way it is. I'm going to even bounce off my brother here. And you know, let a shout out for somebody else as well, too. Hopefully, it touches many others. When it comes to Perceiving the discernment of love of others, as my brother said, it starts with yourself and your personal identity. Because engaging inside this world, man, all this stuff going on, MTV, BET, Housewives of Hollywood and all this crap, and your, your crazy uh, uh, neighbor that sits next to you at work doing their nails and doing their hair and talking about this and talking about... Like, you get confused sometimes, and you happen to emulate others. Very, 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 very important to know who you are and be concrete in who you are most definitely love you you are not a mistake love yourself most definitely so make sure that you have that done first before you even thinking about engaging in other people's lives like straight up man people will mess you up especially if you're not sure about yourself especially most definitely okay so after doing that and being sure within yourself and sure you are inside, know, knowing that your identity lies with Christ, then from there you move on. You know, in daily life, living here on earth, you're running into people, you meet people, and you talk to people. Um, very, very important to, in some cases, be unbiased. Okay, don't be so quick to judge. Matter of fact, if you can, don't judge at all. Not one bit. Because at the end of the night, you end up looking like a damn fool. Straight up. Straight up and down. Okay, you know, before I even continue, a shout out to my girl Tasha. Okay, um, we spoke over at Fridays, and she said, talk about being single. This right here, this identity crisis, falls along with the struggles struggles of being single and lasting throughout life and, and not falling. Okay, when being single, hey, look, it's, it's, it's easy. You just got out of a long relationship. However it ended, uh, you found them cheating. Um, it was one of those moments. It wasn't me. <laughs> it was one of those moments right there. <laughs> God, I prayed that so many times. Coming back, stop reminiscing. <laughs> but um, whatever it is you went through, and now that you're single, you are alone best time for you best time for you okay now all you have to do and focus on is God okay yeah I'm 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 a rep God all the time God okay your family and what other other objection it is in your life or mission it is in your life and just focus on that okay put your hands in the higher power, put whatever it is in the hands of the higher power, and let it ride out. Okay, watch what's going on. You feel me? It's mad easy. Watch what's going on out there. When you single, it's crazy. When you single and you trying to do things right, a whole bunch of bills start coming your way. For real. <laughs> I know me personally. When I first had went single, maybe about like a few weeks ago. Like as soon as I went single. A whole bunch of chicks started hitting me up like out of nowhere. Like, yo, I haven't talked to you in three months. You talking about jumping my bones already? Where have you been? What are you talking about? <laughs> now I'm saying that now, but of course, at the time I was like, looking at my text message. Mm, I did want to hit that. But no. You gotta remain focused. 
you gotta remain focused. Once again, it falls with your identity. Know who you are. Accept it. You are not a mistake. If people can't handle you, then bump them. It is what it is. Keep moving. Make sure that throughout the day, you dedicate yourself an hour from work to do something productive to maintain your mind and your spirit. Whether it's reading, something motivational, something spiritual, something financial, whatever it is that you focused on, and dive into it. That is also part of your meditation. I ain't talking about no meditation, one mind and body separated. No, I'm talking about within yourself. Meditate and get stuff straight here and here. Yeah, just make my chest jump right there. You can't really see it though, because you know it's kind of dark in the t shirt. But, anyways, <laughs> but get that right, my girl Tasha. I told you before, man, keep smiling, little mama. Keep, what you got, girl? I, don't, I ain't trying to flirt with you, girl, but you got a good smile. Anyways, the discernment, we find the discernment of love. And other people, don't be so quick to jump into it. Not everything is for you. You're not meant to cross paths with everybody in your life. Just because somebody walked past you and said something to you, don't mean you meant to do something within their life or they meant to do something within your life. Don't be so head heavy to dive head first into everything that looks good or like an opportunity for yourself or for somebody else. Because they ain't always but yourself. But watch. The saying goes, watch and pray. Not watch, stop, pray. The saying goes, watch and pray. So watch, look over your surroundings and look on what's going on. Look on what's going on, <clears throat> most definitely. It's okay to engage, but you know what? Once again, identity, know yourself. Me personally, for a fact, I know that. If I'm on my path of self-righteousness, where that's leading me personally, I'm on my path of self-righteousness, which means that leave drugs alone, leave all this alcohol alone, these crazy women, and these all these foul temptation alone, and just keep going on, and following your dreams and your passion. With me personally, if I know that that's me, and that's my lifestyle, and that's what I'm on right now, then I'm not messing with the person that for a fact I know that is out there showing it, being a hoe and playing lives, women, women playing men and deceitfulness, stealing, lying. I'm not about to associate my this person has been cut off. <laughs> but besides them, hey, spread the joy. There's no problem with seeing good in others and in learning to interpret love in different ways because everybody loves differently. We mention God a lot and spirituality and whatnot, but you know what? People see it differently. You got to learn how to accept love, move on, help. Teach all of that, all of that stuff. That's going too deep into it, but you know what? That right there is my foundation. Okay, try to be unbiased and biased at the same time if you can. You gotta balance it out, right? But I'm gonna leave it at that right now. Okay, hopefully that's touched somebody. Um, yeah, basically, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Snap. Oh, Mrs. Jackson. Thank you for watching. I know you and your family are learning a lot from this. I'm just grateful to go ahead and hand that to you. And I know you're going to do great. Yeah, you yeah. Congratulations on your baby. You're going to be awesome. Oh, man, she baby. God bless. I'm See you another time. Be easy.